Uh, and I have a great pleasure to uh, introduce Matt, who will be speaking about news valence. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Take it away. Cool. All right. Uh, let me just set my timer going. Bump. There we go. All right. Cool. Um, news valence, an underview. Uh, so, what valence now? Uh, so basically, like. Um, this talks kind of a lot about the idea of, uh, of surveillance, um, but also kind of more about how you can do it, how you can do it back. Um, so there's a concept uh, called surveillance. Um, so both words are from French. Uh, sur is above, sur is from below. And it's the idea of, um, of uh, basically surveying as a participant. So like, say, if you're wearing like a body cam or something like that, um, you, you, you could be said to be like surveilling. Um, News valence because new is French for we, and it sounds like news, and also, you know, like jokes aren't funny if you have to explain them. Uh, so, moving on, related to that, uh, who's this clown? Um, so, I'm Matt, um, aka Grimware. Um, I, uh, I've worked in like sort of systems and infrastructure for about eight years, um, and uh, this year started working in infrastructure security. So, I'm quite interested in uh, data security and privacy. Um, other than that, like, I'm absolutely not qualified to be telling people uh, about media and news and things like that. So absolutely take all of this with a pinch of salt. Um, I'm also a consummate professional and wasting my own time. Um, so if I only live to serve as an example to others about how not to do it, that's fine too. Um, so this talk, uh, basically, uh, it, it's it's kind of about like sort of aggregating news. It's about like being able to analyze news, um, and and just sort of it's a kind of a personal struggle to to stay well informed. Um, so to start off with, I'm just going to talk about like what what were some of my influences in in actually kind of taking this on because I think it sort of gives some good context as to what exactly I was trying to achieve. Um, so one of my uh, one of the one of the big influences for this is uh, Hunter S. Thompson, um, and this is partly because, uh, well, I mean, I'll will start with a quote here. Um, he said, "I don't get any satisfaction out of the old traditional journalist's view. I just covered the story. I just gave a balanced view." Objective journalism is one of the main reasons American politics has been allowed to be so corrupt for so long. You can't be objective about Nixon. Um, and I think we can probably think of other American presidents that you can't be objective about. Um, but basically, it was this idea that um, the way that he the way that he reports stories or reported stories, um, he he was fundamentally involved in it. Um, there was a lot of his opinion; it was very much on his sleeve. Um, there was also a questionable amount of actual fact in it. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that, uh, so he wrote a book called uh, Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail, 72. It was about the McGovern campaign. Um, and uh, the uh, campaign strategist for the campaign, on, on the back of the book, there's a quote from him. It says, uh, it was the most accurate and least factual account of that campaign. Um, and I really like this idea uh, that, that it's kind of it's kind of talking about narrative there. You know, it's not so much about the individual points that happen as much as the the uh, the overall flavour of it. And I also really like the idea of of knowing of a of a journalist or a reporter that you kind of come to know them through their work, so you can sort of assess. You know, uh, do I believe this bit? Do I believe that bit? Um, so moving on, uh, an another influence here was um, Spider Jerusalem. Um, so uh, this is from the comic Transmetropolitan. He's heavily based on Hunter S. Thompson, but basically with more of a conscience. Um, and one of the things in this comic is that um, it's a very, very small part of it, but there's references to, um, to basically a news feed called The Hole. And it's run by two people. And uh, one of the characters says to another, um, it's, it's like news, but with all the bias boiled out. And I thought about this for a while, and I was thinking like, hey, that's really cool. And then I thought about it a bit more, and I was like, two people editing all the news, and they actually managed to remove bias? Like, that seems really, really naive, in a sense. Um, and also, I think it removes a lot of information, because uh, 
uh, quite, quite a while ago now, there's this BBC News article, um, why Russians watch TV news they don't trust. And I was just blown away that the journalist was so surprised that people would watch a news source that they don't necessarily believe. The point being that there's a lot that can be inferred when somebody lies to you. Like, lies show intent. If, if, a, news, if, a, if a news outlet goes around just reporting actual facts, you can't infer intent from that. But if somebody is in the news one week, but suddenly we've stopped talking about them the next, you can infer from that that somebody wants you to not be looking in that direction. And I was thinking about, like, you know, how do you, how do you aggregate this sort of information? Um, and, and this idea, again, of, of surveillance, you know. Uh, <laughs> so the NSA had, uh, had the, the program PRISM, um, and uh, one, of, one of the parts of that was uh, the tool X Keyscore. Um, and this is kind of like that, that whole idea of, well, you know, why, why do I want to have a view of the world? Well, I think it's because I want to be able to see, you know, what that intent is, like who's doing what. Um, and it's that idea of kind of surveil, uh, surveilling back. Um, an X key score is basically like heuristic scoring uh, of people under surveillance based on criteria. Um, and I was thinking, hey, well, that would be really cool to do something similar with, with news and do like natural language processing and sentiment analysis of the different news outlets and actually gather some statistics, you know, have alerting on particular kinds of, um, on particular kinds of stories. And it turns out that that's really hard. Um, so my initial attempts really sucked to be honest, uh, because I was trying to uh, attack this problem with like, you know, I'm going to just scrape all, scrape all of these sites and then, and then, you know, sort of kind of process them. And, and, and it was just really diffi difficult. Um, but that got me into thinking about why is it so difficult? Um, and, I, and I think that that's, that's a really big part of this. So just looking at what news even is, um, caveat here, um, free press is good. Um, I'm criticizing, but, uh, but you know, it's the best system we've got at the moment. Um, but basically, news, what, what is news? Um, so it's some events that purportedly happened that someone has decided you should know about. Um, and, and that's pretty much as far as it goes, uh, because, I mean, the premise is obviously to keep people informed. Why, why do people need to be informed? Well, it's an important function of democracy. If you're going to vote for a representative, you need to have some understanding of the policies and everything, or you, know, you can just vote for the worst person in the world, as tends to happen most. Um, but it, it can't be done by a government in, in, in a real democracy, because ultimately, if they're shaping your view of the world, that's going to turn into a terrible feedback loop. Um, so it has to be done for profit, effectively. It's left to the private sector, um, which doesn't necessarily uh, lend itself to, to necessarily having the right motives um, and the right incentives. Uh, and it leads to a lot of people like, uh, like Butternut Hitler here um, saying fake news a lot. Um, I'm really, really pleased, actually, that the screen was on that side. It was a bit of a gamble, 50-50. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, fake, this whole idea of fake news, um, this is a really interesting one because, you know, there's real fake news, which is like, you know, saying that uh, Democrats are running a paedophile ring out of pizza, pizzerias in DC, which is just totally false. Um, then there's kind of real fake news, which is largely like selective truth with heavy bias, non sequitur interpretation. And this stuff's really, really difficult to nail down. Um, and then, you know, fake fake news, which is basically things that you don't like other people saying. Um, and we run into real problems here of, of interpretation, especially with different news outlets having different uh, financial backing, different financial uh, motivations. Um, but one of the things to take away from this is all of it is data. You know, you can, you can use all of that to interpret sort of some, some idea of motive. Um, but there's also a lot to fall afoul of here in terms of uh, the way that we share news, the way that we communicate and we talk about it. Um, you know, how can you not be part of propagating the wrong stuff? So one of the lessons I learned in all of this is that if you don't care enough to do your research, you don't care. Basically, if you want to share an opinion on the internet, make sure that you actually know 
you know the subject, you know your sources, because ultimately the internet doesn't need more ill-informed opinions. Um, and if you can't be bothered to look around, you probably just don't care that much. Um, so one of the ways that, one of the ways that I try and um, and be well informed is you know I've got particular people who who uh, I follow and um, the Grux one of them um, he's he's really excellent he um, he does a lot of stuff on um, operational security and this was me tweeting about uh, malware tech uh, when he got indicted uh, by the FBI in the US. And I was just saying, um, you know, rather than spreading my hot takes, I'm going to wait for the Grok to say something so that I can uh, parrot his opinion as my own. And he replied to me, I'm waiting for Oren Kerr to do his post. Um, Oren Kerr being a, a law professor. Um, so so it's, it's this, this whole idea, this is another thing I learned, you know, to be considered well-informed, stand on the shoulders of giants. Like ha having that set of sources for the things that you're interested in is really, really great. Um, but then again, selecting your sources is hard because actually um, human beings are really, really terrible uh, at perceiving things as they are. So, um, uh, so there's like, you know, like absolute objectivity and rationality are absolute lies uh, from the point of view that like we're more likely to believe things that confirm our own beliefs, confirm our own tribalism and our, our identity. Um, or just convenient, um, and we're also extremely resistant to cognitive load, you know, so like, we like tweets because they're pithy and they sound true, and you don't want to dig into it because you don't really care that much, but you like to take on those, those really quick, easy ideas, like, why aren't there any jobs? Must be immigrants, you know, or it could be the, the government's not working hard to create jobs, you know? Um, you know, if something becomes nuanced, we, we automatically, our minds just kind of slip off of it. We don't want to deal with it. But there's something that makes this so, so much worse, and it's social media. Um, the idea is pretty rife that engaging with an online platform in order to, uh, to change the world is a thing. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers Coney 2012 as the counterpoint to that. Um, but basically, don't argue with people on the internet. Don't share news on the internet. It's, it's not actually really very helpful. It doesn't convince people. So like the whole Cambridge Analytica thing, um, they converted a lot of people who already believed in things that you know, Donald Trump was saying or already believed things that Levy, you were saying. They just managed to convert them into voters. They didn't change anybody's mind. All this does by engaging with these platforms is generate advertising revenue. And advertising is a really fundamental piece of this whole puzzle, especially as to why it's so difficult to aggregate news. So like, advertising is basically the trade of attention. Um, and trading attention is if it's currency. Uh, so the, the old school way of justifying it has always been you know, introducing products to people who may want them. And that's, that's fine, that's absolutely fine. But a lot of the time it's more about generating desire for products in people who are trying to give their attention to something else. And especially if you look at like uh, content industries like, and um, especially legacy uh, media. This is, this is especially obvious because um, in radio, you know, you're listening to some music and then suddenly someone's telling you about double glazing. Um, TV, you know, you're just you're just trying to watch some nice TV, and it stops so that uh, so that somebody can tell you that you're fat, you're ugly, and you smell, so that you'll buy things. Um, and it's and it's pretty insidious in that sense. And it's especially obvious when you watch things on Netflix that have been on broadcast TV, and you're like, why why does it stop and then start every now? Oh, that's where the advert breaks used to be. So all of this content is created to get you to watch the advertisements. Um, and this, this gets even more interesting in, in uh, the future, um, because you can prove to some degree that a particular individual has looked at an ad or clicked on an ad on the internet. Um, and it can be done without user content, you know, tracking people around the internet. And it's mostly offloaded onto uh, ad delivery uh, networks. So using like off-domain content and scripts and building usage patterns to sell on. Um, and you can start to see why this is all about driving up engagement. 
And the problem with, with just, you know, doing these things to drive up engagement is it's not about keeping people informed anymore. It's literally about making sure that people stay on your website. So that's kind of the background as to, as to why it was a difficult problem to start off with. Um, you can see it's, it's all pretty, pretty loaded and pretty difficult to solve. Um, so in terms of, like, taking back control, uh, Basically, I've got a few mantras that I, that I used in, in sort of all of my approaches. Um, so I'm just going just gonna to list them off before I do a few demos. Um, basically, like, the first one is nobody's going to call the internet police. Uh, I'm not advocating anybody do anything illegal, just kind of annoying for ad networks. Um, additionally, you might have to live with Google captures for a while if you do some of this wrong. Um, Secondly, uh, you, you're good at producing metadata. People are very good at producing metadata. So never do it for free. I mean, it's effectively got an equivalent cash value, right? People buy this stuff. People sell this stuff. So when you give data to someone, you, you should make sure that you're actually getting something worthwhile in return. And failing that, uh, mantra three is add more piss. Um, this is from a friend of mine who also coined the term butternut Hitler. Um, and it's basically the idea that uh, so somebody said to her, well, what about when somebody already has your data? You know, how do you get the piss back out of the swimming pool? And my friend said, just add more piss. You know, just obfuscate. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, demo time. All right, I'm going to have to try and do this. Uh, um, th so, th so this particular demo is about um, people kept sending me links to the times.co.uk and I kept getting very annoyed that um, they had a data paywall. I'm probably going to need both hands for this bit. So you can see William Martinez has decided to sign up for the times.co.uk and uh, is just about to click get access and I'm not doing this. So you can see this is, this is failed because it's like users picked an invalid email address. That's because I don't want the network to start getting captured. Um, but I was previously using this before they had any uh, validation there. Like every time that somebody sent me a times.co.uk link, I would literally just run this script and it would load up a fresh incognito browser um, and just sign up as someone totally fake. This is the, kind of the idea of the, uh, the add more piss philosophy, is basically if somebody wants to put up a data paywall, give them data. You know, data is not information. Just give them data. It doesn't have to be real. Um, uh, where have I gone? <laughs> so uh, one of the things you can learn from this, and one of the things I learned from this, is uh, it might be your website, but when it's in my browser, it's my code. Um, so the way that I went about like doing that particular thing um, was uh, so, so effectively, you know, all, all of these websites they want to keep you engaged. So they've they've got lots of um, <laughs> this gift gets me every time. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you, you know, they, they want to keep you engaged. So they. Uh, they want to make it pretty. And the way you make a website pretty is you apply cascading style sheets, um, and it's done using the document object model. Now, part of the thing about this is that it means that everything on the website is effectively tagged with what it is. And in order to be able to you know, keep good de um, development velocity and everything like that, you try not to change that structure too much. Um, if it's not consistent, it's hell for developers. And this is an advantage for us, because we want to aggregate news. We don't care if it's pretty or not. So uh, effectively, it means that we can find that content. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's see. Uh, I've got to follow this link here. Uh, it's in the wrong tab. Over here. All right, cool. OK, so um, what we've got here is just like a BBC thing. Uh, it wants me to agree to um, cookies, and I don't want to. I don't want to look at that either. So we can just whoop, delete that. <laughs> uh, I used to do this with ad block pop-ups, but they don't 
tend to do them anymore. You just like delete the overlay and then add on scroll stuff and then you can just read it anyway. Um, so uh, what we want, really, we want that to go away as well, um, is we want to be able to just pick out the actual news here. So what we can do is actually select, where is it, where is it, where is it? Story body, here we go. So this is actually the section of the, uh, the section of the website we're interested in. You can see it just highlights the whole thing, that main header image, all of the text. So what we can do is actually take this, yep, and copy that over. No, not that one, this one. And we can go, so we can actually just fetch, fetch that website from the command line, right? And then what we can do is we can do stuff like, in fact, you know, what we can do is we can cheat and use our command history. Uh, da, 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 da. So what I'm doing here is um, just telling it to select out the bits of the document object model that are inside story body. And what we can do is go even further and just say, I just want everything in the paragraph tags and everything that's text inside of that. And what we've got is just the article now. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. That's, that's something we can do to, to help in uh, just getting our news out of our news websites. Um, so yeah, uh, one of the things I learned in all of doing this is that uh, terms of service hinge on your being able to retract service. The first thing that anybody will serve you is the actual content. They'll let the ads load later. So you can use that to your advantage and actually just only request the main part of the content. So it means that when people say like, oh, you have to agree to this, you have to agree. To well, I've already got the text, so mm, don't really care. Um, so we can get the, uh, the actual news out of the website, but how do we get a feed of it? So uh, there's a thing called RSS and uh, also Atom. That's the RSS schema right there. You can see that there's like uh, uh, a channel described and then multiple items within that channel. Uh, so they can be like links, news feeds. Um, so it's easy to generate um, and Atom is more different from that, but it's kind of the same sort of thing. Um, so basically, what does this look like? News, beauty, nope. Sorry, can't type when people are watching. There's quite a lot of people watching. Uh, okay, so this is this is my news feed reader. This is what I use, and I'm like, okay, well, we've got this feed of news. Well, what's this guy talking about? We don't have any news at all. This is actually all just links and truncated content because people want you to go to their websites. So it's pretty useless. Um, Pretty useless. Um, so most people just provide click-throughs so that they can get ad metrics, get you into their click hole. Um, and also, like a lot of uh, a lot of there's a lot of misuse of the schema for RSS as well. Um, so when I ended up having to write my own RSS library, um, it was largely I didn't actually look at the RFC at all because I was like, well, sure, there's an RFC, but doesn't mean that the people producing RSS feeds have ever actually read it. So I was just going on the basis of the actual data I had. Um, but hey, you know, now we've got a bunch of stuff that we can actually add together. So we can get a feed of uh, articles, we can extract the article body from a given web page, and for an added bonus, we can dump it all back into the RSS format um, and use the same reader. So that's what I did. Um, I made uh, better feed, uh, and it's written in Clojure. I'm very sorry. I'm not that sorry. Um, so demo again. Uh, this is really actually begging for trouble. That's quite right. Uh, window. Which one? Which one? Which one? Not that one. Not that one. That one? Oh, no. That didn't work. Yes, this is it. Okay, so I mean, I'm really sorry. This is actually the interface for it at the moment, which is Emacs, um, because I'm awful. Uh, but if effectively, like, what I've got here is uh, you can see on the left hand side, there's a list of feeds. And then I just will 
run and it'll run in the background and basically spit out all of those those feeds so it'll go through each feed take the uh, article content spit it back into the feed and then dump it out on disk so what this actually looks like in practice uh, is uh, uh, nope nope no no that's no good so we've got exactly the same feeds as before and oh, that hasn't loaded properly two seconds sorry this is very chonky <laughs> uh, okay that top one hasn't loaded never mind um, so it's the same feeds as before but actually we've got all of the article content in there um, and this this particular feed is actually all listed different websites so I've got a whole huge list of different CSS selectors for that um, so yeah, like, what does it do? Uh, so it's got, um, sorry, slide management. Uh, so it's got a few different features. It's per domain selectors. So if you know you you visit bbc.co.uk or whatever, um, you know you can say for BBC you pick out this bit. Um, you can configure domains that will do redirects. So like aggregate news feeds that will just redirect to a different site. Um, configurable user agent is pretty much the only thing you really have to lie about is like yeah I'm actually a Chrome browser don't block me um, and you can also use Chrome in headless mode uh, for sites that have JavaScript DOM manipulation which is really funny when you accidentally leave it going in the background and your laptop barks at you because of autoplay videos um, so uh, batteries aren't included on this because uh, if I were to distribute um, the CSS selectors people would probably get a little bit salty about it um, so you know I shouldn't be showing like all of this sort of stuff on uh, online um, but yeah what this doesn't address though is the um, is this whole idea of being able to look at patterns and I'm not very far in it yet um, but I have made some progress so I've got this thing uh, FedEx uh, which should take any RSS feed and dump it into Elasticsearch, which then means that we can search the, uh, search through uh, the news articles that we've already looked through. Um, and I can run it on my uh, reconstituted feeds as well. Um, and it can additionally spit out more RSS feeds, so you can actually have a standing search for something. Uh, right, yeah, there's absolutely a non-negligible chance that this one will fail. Uh, make, uh, what was it? Search Womp. Okay. And reload those. So you can see I've got search results here for Apple. This is just all news that I've been reading and that I've indexed. So I can now search for anything that's got Apple in it. Um, we can also search for EMF. And there was a Hackster.io post about it, uh, about the badge, which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much how that works. And I would love to do loads more with that. So like, I'd like to start doing some like sentiment analysis to be able to score different news sources on like, you know, this news source speaks negatively about immigrants 90% more than all the other ones, that sort of thing. Um, so statistics per domain, like maybe some like natural language processing so that you can, instead of just doing a text-based search, you can build a narrative throughout of what has this person been doing, what has this organization been doing. Um, also better relevance scoring, because I mean like it's just a basic text search at the moment. Um, and an actual, actually usable interface, because not everybody wants to plumb about in Emacs and Clojure. Um, but yeah, I want to leave you with like the final lesson um, that I learned is, is basically that if you don't control your information diet, someone else will. Uh, and the content industries are actually pretty insidious about this. Um, so it's just one of those things to take in mind. Like if, if it's not really, really important and you're not going to do your research, like don't just take it at face value, you know, treat it with some skepticism um, and control what you uh, control what you let into your brain the same way you control what you let into your body. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>